Okay, it's time. Uh, say bye to fragments with conductor and Kotlin by Mikhail Beltran. Mikhail? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you. Konnichiwa, uh, minasan. My name is Mikhail. I'm an Android developer. I'm based in Berlin, and I work at Nevenan. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite libraries, Conductor. And I'm really happy to see the room so full. I was surprised to see so many people interested in the library. So I hope that you end up using it at the end. Um, I will give an extended introduction to the library. Anything, everything that you need to be productive from testing, dependency injection, patterns, how you use it with the library. And you can follow also the slides and also the code samples are on my Twitter account. You will see my handle on the top of the screen all the time. So you can go anytime, uh, find the, the, the links there. You can also send me questions afterwards if you need. So what is Conductor? If you don't know anything about it, it is a lightweight alternative for creating view-based Android applications. When I say a view-based Android application, what I mean is the alternative is that every time you need to have a screen, you create a new activity. So you open a new screen in your app, you open a new activity. So the alternative is that instead of creating a new activity, you change the view which is inside this activity. So now there is a way to do that. The official way is to use fragments, but there are also alternatives. And one alternative is Conductor. <coughs> the, this is an example of what I'm talking about, right? This is from the app that I'm working on, and you have one single activity, and you're changing the screen that you have inside this activity. You also have a, like a transition, you also have navigation back, everything is provided by Conductor. So the way you start using Conductor is like this. You will have your activity in your app, and you add one router to it. The router is a piece from Conductor, which is the one that is taking care of managing the stack of views that you're going to have. And then you will have this stack of views. And each view will be contained inside one controller. And the controller is the one that will be, it will be in, in charge of um, creating the view, destroying the view, depending on the life cycle that you are on. And we will see this today, how it works. So the way to get started is you add one router to your activity. And you have one method for that, which is this attach router. The interesting thing here is that you pass this controller container. And the controller container is one uh, view group that you will have to put in your activity layout. This is change handler frame layout, which extends the Android frame layout. And this is the only thing that you need to have in your activity layout, is where all the views of your app will be displayed. So once you have your router, then you say, if I, have, if I don't have a controller on my router, no, I check if I have already a root controller, I will add one. This will prevent you to recreating the whole stack of views when you have configuration changes. We will see it later. But for now, you just add one controller at the bottom of your router. The controller, which I have I talked about before, is the one that manages parts of your, your UI. It's similar to activities and fragments. It manages its own life cycle and controls interactions between the UI and the logic. It is, however, much lighter and easier to use than the alternative. This is an example of a controller that just works. And this is all the code you need. You have to extend the controller class from Conductor, and you need to implement one method, this method on create view. This is an abstract method, so you cannot miss it. And when you do inside on create view, is you inflate the view, or you create it maybe programmatically. And you do any operation that you need with the view. Maybe you need to do some customization on code, and then you return the view, and the view is displayed. This is the only thing you need to create a controller. Now, if you run it with the code that I show you today, uh, now, um, you will see already the controller displayed on the screen, the view that I have created. And if I rotate the screen, the controller stays there, and also the view is displayed. <coughs> now you say you want to navigate from one controller to the other. You have methods for that. You have this push controller, which we will be do, 
is to add one controller on top of the controller that you have. And the view of this controller will be also displayed on top. So to navigate from one to the other, you access to the router. And you can access to the router maybe from inside the controller or also from your activity. You can have your navigating code anywhere else in your app if you want, as, soon, uh, as far as you have access to the router. So you call push controller with a router transaction to the new instance of the controller that you want to navigate to. If you want to navigate back, you have two ways of doing that. You can either handle the back press, and controller is already providing you a way to do that. So um, you will add this extension, this overwrite on your activity, and you, this, your router will be handling all clicks back. And if the router has um, controllers on the stack to remove, then it will remove them. If not, it will pass the on back press to the, to the activity. Or you can just say, pop the current controller, and it will remove the controller from it. So far, this is everything you need to start using Conductor. Really, it's super easy. It's super easy for beginners. Um, and now we will see some more advanced cases. But before, we want to make it nicer. And we will add transition animations to all these push and pop actions. So Conductor comes with a couple of transition animations that I use a lot, the horizontal transition and the fade transition. You can see them in action here. So the horizontal transition comes from, from one side and it comes from the other. The fade transition fades into the screen and then it fades back when you remove it. The way to add these uh, change handlers, which is called in, in Conductor, is on every transaction that we have seen before, you add a pop change handler and a push change handler. The cool thing here is that you are defining what is the animation that it will play when my controller is removed, and what's the animation that it will play when I'm pushing my controller. So you can have different also. You can say, I want to have horizontal for the push, but I want to have a fade for the, for the pop. You can do that. You can match them. And you can also create your own change handlers to have your own custom animations. It's the best way, I think, to understand how this works internally. For that purpose, I have created one also as well. If you want to do that by yourself, I recommend you, there are different ways, but I recommend you to use the animator change handler. You can extend this animator change handler, create your own, and you have to implement the get, animate, get animator method. With this, you're going to return an animator set which all, with all the animations that you're going to play on, on your change handler. If you're trying to guess what I'm doing here is I will add two animations, one for the scale X and one for the scale Y, in which the screen will come from the center, 0, 0, and it will fill the whole screen to 1. And I'm applying this um, animation to the two view. Here I'm getting, I'm getting two parameters, the to and the from view. And you can define a different animation, let's say, to the view which is disappearing, or to the view which is the previous one, and to the view which are, you are going to. So if we take a look at this code, how it looks like, it's like this. It comes from the center, and it goes on the whole screen. So it's really easy to create your own custom animations and to add them into your, your project. You can complicate it more. And because the two view that you are going to, it's also a view from your app, and you know the contents of it, you can also access to the individual child of it. In this case, I'm accessing to the image, that image that you saw on the center of the screen, and I'm adding a rotation on it. So I want it to rotate 360 degrees while it's also growing on the screen. And I can access to the child. I can even use with a Kotlin Android extensions. I can access through the ID. And it looks like this. So it appears from the center and also does this spin when it loads. You can start adding all the crazy stuff you want. <laughs> but let's move on. So that was quite fun, let's say, to do. But now let's talk about something less fun, which is the life cycle. Everyone is afraid about this word. So today I'm going to be talking about 
um, a simplified version of the conductor life cycle because it's the, it's the important part. It's, it's important to know that with conductor you get all the life cycle events of the activity but also you get the life cycle events of the controller itself. And <clears throat> another interesting thing that maybe you don't know but I think it's the most powerful thing of, of conductor also is that controllers don't get destroyed on configuration changes. Uh, we will, you will see that now. This is important to keep in mind. So for studying the life cycle, let's start with one instance of a controller. Okay, if you, if you cannot read it from, from the back, it says new controller instance. And you push this to the router. On create view, the method that we saw before is gonna be called. And now the controller is on top and the controller is displayed. So what says here is on create view and controller is on top. Many things can happen that on destroy view is going to be called now. Maybe because you have another controller pushed on top of your controller. Maybe because you have a configuration change. Or maybe your controller is removed from the stack. Or maybe even also there was a process killing your app because it was using too much resources and was in the background. And also your controller, it's, which is on top, is also destroyed. So in all cases, on destroy view is going to be called. And at that moment, your view is null. You, you cannot access the view which is contained in your controller. So there are cases in which on create view is going to be called again on the same instance of the controller that you have. No? So you have created an instance, but you went all the way. On the straight view was called. Again, on create view is called again. Maybe this happens in two cases. For example, is if you have your controller, and then you had another controller on top, and this controller is removed, then the one that it remains on top now, on create view is going to be called again on the same instance of the controller. If you had a configuration change because you rotate your device, also again, on create view is going to be called in the same instance of the controller. So now, in which cases is not the same instance of the controller? Maybe if you remove a controller from the router, that instance of the controller cannot be reused. So let's say you, have, you create one instance of a controller, you put it in your router, and then you pop it, you remove it. You cannot take a store, let's say, a store that instance in some variable and then say, I put it back again. You cannot do that with conductor. It forbids you to do this, and it's because it's necessary for the life cycle. The other case is when you have a process killing your app. In that case, the instance of the controller is also not the same. So in that case, it gets removed from the router and it doesn't get called on create view again. In any case, it will be a new instance, what it's called now. So understanding the life cycle was important to know why we need to pass parameters correctly with conductor. And this is a mistake that I was doing, I think, for six months while I was using the library, <laughs> which is just, well, I can just pass parameters on the constructor of the controller. Why not? And it actually works. It works. And you rotate the screen, and the parameter stays there. So if I say parameter equals to Tokyo, then it says my favorite city is Tokyo. And it will be displayed, my favorite city is Tokyo. I rotate the screen, it works. So when it's not going to work this, when your controller is destroyed, and it gets recreated later, because that parameter is lost. Conductor is preventing you to do that because you have to provide an empty constructor also, or a constructor with a bundle. You don't, you don't see that here, because this is a simplified version of the code, but you will see that on, on my samples, that you have to provide this also empty constru constructor. And in that case, you don't have anything for the parameter, you have a problem here. So the right way to pass parameters to controllers is using a bundle, which is similar to how you pass parameters, let's say, to an activity, right? Um, you need to use the controller bundle um, constructor in which you're passing this bundle. And what I like to do is I have the primary constructor in Kotlin for a bundle, and then I have a secondary constructor 
which is taking all the parameters that I want to pass to. And then I create this bundle in place, and I do put string with the extra bundle. And with the new KTX library that came from Google like two days ago, this is even cleaner, so <laughs> more reasons to do that. And then I can access my parameter by just using a lazy initialization. I can access to these arguments, get the string that I passed, and this works. This also survives when the process is killed by the system. That's the right way to pass parameters to your controller. I talk about the life cycle, no? So it's important as well to keep in mind with the life cycle that when you're accessing views, the view can be null at some point. And this is usually how I access views in, with Kotlin. When you're not using Kotlin, you're using Butterknife probably with Java. And what you do with Butterknife is in the onCreate view, you bind all the views that you have declared, and then on the destroy view, you call to unbind. With, um, with Kotlin, you can just use the Kotlin Android extensions and access the views directly by the, by the IDs. And in this, this case, you have to check if the view is null or not. This getView method, which translates to a view property in Kotlin, it's nullable because at some points the view can be null. And I like to wrap it like this. So if the view is null, then I, it's not null, sorry. Then I run on it and I access the view with the ID text view. You also need to keep in mind that the <coughs> Kotlin Android extensions, if you're familiar with it, it does some kind of caching on activities and fragments. It is not doing caching here, but you can try with the experimental branch of, um, of Kotlin where they, they, are, they have a feature for enabling this. <coughs> Don't be tempted to do this because life cycle again, right? How are you going to set this text view back to null when on destroy view is called? Yeah, I'm going to make the text view nullable. So what's the point again? <laughs> Don't store references to the view because think again about the life cycle of the controller. And also keep in mind, my controller is going to survive configuration changes all the time. So if I'm keeping a, a, a reference to the view that is destroyed, it's bad business. Conductor also works really well with MVP, MVVM, and I, I really like the architecture components. And Conductor already provides some uh, class, some controller, which helps you with the life cycle from architecture components, but it's missing some functionality for having the view model from architecture components. And as this example, I will show you how you can extend the library to add this functionality. And you will see how easy it is to extend. And you can use the power of uh, surviving configuration changes for that. When you want to use the view model from architecture components, you may be tempted to do something like this. I can just access the activity from the controller and I can get my view model from the activity, and I can just observe for lifecycle events from my activity also from within my controller. What's the problem here, right? You have one activity and you have one controller on top. What you're listening is to the life cycles of the activity. So when your QA, you, you test this, you run this in your code and it works, but then comes QA and says, oh, this is the bug. You select one item in your app, and then you display one controller, and you load the view model for that item, and you load all the data and everything. Then you go back, and you select a different item, and you create a new controller. But the view model is the same as before, because it's living without, within your activity. So you're displaying the data from the other item that you have selected. The way to fix this is to make controllers aware of the life cycle and also make the controller the one that is in charge of having your view model. So um, there is a contribution here for having this on the library, which is um, I want to have my own view model store on my controller. That will allow me 
to have my own view models inside the controller because controllers survive configuration changes. I want to use that for storing my view models and making my view models survive my configuration changes. And even if you want to create your own custom solution for MVVM, you can use this power tool. No? So you can keep your view model in your controller. It will survive configuration changes. Now look this, because the lifecycle controller, it's a controller that comes also with a library, which is providing you all the events from the architecture components. It's called lifecycle registry owner. And if you are implementing something which works with the architecture components lifecycle, you can use this controller from the library, this lifecycle controller, to extend your controller class. <coughs> and now you can just use the view model as before. Instead of extending controller, you extend the view model controller that you have created. And you use the factory method as before, and you observe by the um, life cycle of, the, um, <clears throat> of your controller and not from the activity. Two more topics remaining. One is dependency injection. And I think all productive apps or production apps are use some kind of dependency injection. And I like to use Dagger. <clears throat> but the same concept works for coin or maybe um, the others that are coding for, for Kotlin. Unfortunately, you cannot use the Dagger Android um, library that was released by Google or plucking, let's say. So you have to do dependency injection the old way, let's say. And this is how I do that. Usually you can access the activity, then I access my application. I have the components in my application class, and I call inject passing the controller. I had a very good question once when I was doing this, this, this talk before, asking me, ah, can I pass the dependency through the controller uh, constructor? And unfortunately not, because again, life cycle, right? Your dependencies will not survive the life cycle. So you have to inject your dependencies from inside. If you're using um, something like coin or like this, you will probably have a lazy initialization for uh, your properties and for the dependencies that you want to inject. Keep in mind that whatever you have injected can survive configuration changes. Here on create view, I'm injecting again and again the same dependency. But I can have some code to say, oh, if it was already injected, don't inject it again. Keep in mind that if you are injecting something that has a reference to the activity that is within, the activity may be destroyed, your controller may be alive still, you will have problems. So be aware of when do you want to inject your dependencies or when do you want to keep them. And finally, my favorite topic, testing. So I test a conductor usually with espresso tests. And what I have is an empty activity which will contain just one router. And what I will do is I will put the controller that I want to test inside this activity. So I create my test. I want to test this testable controller. And I have a rule for my activity, test activity. Then I create the instance of the controller that I want to test. And on the setup, I will set the root with a transaction to the controller that I want to test. And now I can just test it, like if I was testing an activity. I don't have to load the whole app and then navigate to the controller that I want to test. Just load the controller that I want to test directly. And I can access to the controller instance because I have it there, or I can also access to the <clears throat> views like if it was a normal activity or a fragment. So a recap of the session. With Conductor, you can create view-based Android applications. And it's a lightweight alternative to the classic way of do that, doing that with, with fragments. It manages your, stack, your view stack. So anything that happens to your app, a configuration change, it gets destroyed, etc. Your controllers will be there. The stack of views will be there. You don't have to worry about that anymore. 
It also provides nice transition animations by default, and you can create your own very easily. It's also very powerful because everything survives configuration changes. You can use that for your own benefit and for implementing your own architecture, uh, let's say, patterns. And it's also compatible with the view patterns. It's compatible with architecture components, or you can use MVP, MVVM. Everything works. There is no limitations for that. And finally, it's also really easy to test with Espresso. Thank you. Arigato. Thank you.